Adrian Jewell. She was born on November 4th, 2021. She was super chubby, had super big cheeks. Welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where moms and dads share the story of their child who was stillborn or who died in infancy. I'm Winter. And I'm Lee. We are grateful you joined us today. Please note that this is a story of loss and has triggers. Thanks to our lost parents who are willing to be vulnerable and share their children with us. If you're listening to this podcast, just know that on our YouTube channel, there are pictures and videos that are related to the stories that are being shared. Subscribe and share it with a friend that might need it and tell them to subscribe. Why? Because people need to know that even though our babies are no longer with us, they're still a part of us. Rebecca, thank you so much for coming and joining me in our home yeah. <laughs> um, today to tell the story of Adrian. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule and being here yeah, with us. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're so, so excited. I, um, uh, My husband, Lee, also already has talked to your husband and, and they had a wonderful time talking about your daughter as well. So I'm just looking forward to it. I've been looking, I've been talking to Lee about it. I was like, I'm excited to actually hear her side of the story and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about who you are, where you guys are from, what your family looks like. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm Rebecca. I, me and my family, we're from Utah. My husband and I, we've been married for, how long have we been married for? Six years. <laughs> Six okay. years. Okay. Yeah. And we've got um, our oldest son. His name's Harrison. Mm -hmm. He's five. And then um, Adrian, he was our second child and she would be almost. She'd be two in November. Okay. And then we just had Sylvie, our third. She's two months old. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. We were <laughs> trying to, I, I'm just, I'm so impressed that you are in here talking about um, Adrian just having had a baby two months ago. Oh, and oh my I know that that has not been an easy path for you as well. So thank you for being here. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And what do you guys like to do as a family? Are there are, um, things, hobbies and that type of thing that you guys like to do? Um, we like being outside. Mm. My, I mean, I think that's more like my husband's hobby <laughs> and it's kind of just rubbed off on me and yeah. Harrison really likes to be outside too. So when we have the opportunity to, we like going to Southern Utah. Oh, mm -hmm. my son's super into volcanoes and there really? are, yeah, there's like cinder cones down there by St. Are. George. Yeah. So we're hoping to make that kind of like a regular trip. Super fun. He loves it. That is um, cool. Yeah. He's going to be a geologist. I mean, I know. No well, big deal. <laughs> my parents are convinced that he's going to be a volcanologist. <laughs> Which would be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How fun. Well, um, okay. So, and then what do you guys, so you, you are a stay at home mom yeah. with your kids and I, I know that's a lot. So <laughs> that is a, yeah. more than a full-time job. So wonderful. Um, and so tell me a little bit about your kind of family planning. So you had Harrison. You guys were trucking along. And did you guys just feel like it was, was Adrian planned? Was that something that you guys yeah. were hoping to, to add to your family? Yes, she was planned. And it's fun. our first, Harrison, he wasn't planned. He came oh. as a little bit of a surprise. Oh, okay. But so like, I think we were kind of thrown into like yeah. parenthood earlier than we wanted to. Right. But of like, you know, we wouldn't change it mm -hmm. at all. But. So he was a surprise. But then with Adrian, she was very much planned, very much like we were so excited and we're just anticipating her coming. And I was teaching. I, I used to be a teacher. Oh, OK. I only taught for one year before. Like I was teaching the year that we decided that we wanted to have Adrian. OK. And so I didn't want to try teaching and taking care of two little kids at the same time. Right. So I finished the school year pregnant with Adrian. Okay. And then, but you knew you were not yeah, coming not, back the fall. Yeah, okay. Yeah, didn't go back in the fall. Okay. But yeah, we planned for her and we were super excited when we found out that she was a girl. We were like really set on like we wanted one boy and one girl. Yeah. Yeah. So no issues getting pregnant or anything. So. No, no. Okay. I mean, I know that's such a huge struggle for a lot of people. Yeah. And I feel like we're really lucky in that regard that mm -hmm. we haven't ever had a problem with getting pregnant. Yeah. Which I think is why it came... I mean, I, I don't know. It was a huge shock that we lost her because I had never had a miscarriage. We had never struggled. Right. I know that doesn't necessarily mean that, like, getting the struggle of getting pregnant doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. 
you're going to be, you know, having miscarriages and stillbirths. But it just definitely wasn't on our radar radar at all because everything just kind of went yeah. smoothly. Everything went exactly like. the way that we wanted it to. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. When you just when it's not on your radar, it just is, is so it's so shocking. It's so right. shocking. Yeah. OK, so she you guys got pregnant and that was during the last bit of your working um, career at the at the time anyway. Yeah. And you guys found out how did that how did you tell Parker, your husband? <laughs> it was pretty like I just kept like, I don't know, like he was really in the loop. I'm like, I'm going to go get a pregnancy test. Okay. And I'm so it was just I didn't tell him like any exciting way. I literally like went into the bathroom, <laughs> get on the stick and then like waited in there and came back out. I was like, it's positive. And then we celebrated. Super but exciting. I know some people do like the really cute like they do they reveals. go all out I, yeah. yeah I'm just I'm not that way like I can't do that with gender reveals or yeah. pregnancy reveals I just you just I don't to... have the energy to... yeah <laughs> love I, it I, I'll just just announce <laughs> real it. talk yeah <laughs> exactly okay so then you um found out you were pregnant and so did you end up um going in for your like first appointment right what around eight or nine weeks it's usually around that time it yeah. seems like yeah I think so. Everything yeah. looked okay. Everything was good. Yeah. Okay. The entire pregnancy. Like there was never any sign of anything wrong. Really? No issues. No. Nothing. That is. Okay. So then tell me a little bit about like your anatomy scan then, right? Like your, yeah. that's like around 20 weeks. Everything checked out okay. Yeah. Everything was great there too. And, you know, we found out that she was a girl again. Like we don't do like the gender reveals at yeah. all so, so it was you just, just like we just, we just wanted to be told mm -hmm. right there and then mm -hmm. so they told us we were having a girl you know we're crying because we're so happy yeah yeah there was no problem she didn't have any issues at all and Looked good i like i never had a reason to feel nervous for that really um and maybe we can like talk about it later but like with this third pregnancy that i had after adrian like it was a very different experience mm. of, like i understand now why some people go into the anatomy scan feeling really Worried. nervous because after losing Adrian, it, you know, I felt a lot more anxious, but gotcha. with Adrian's pregnancy, we had no reason. Yeah. Because probably stress. Harrison's pregnancy was fine as yeah, well. Yeah. He was, <laughs> everything went well with his, everything went well with Adrian's and, you know, up to the very end. Yeah. Uh, when you guys found out that she was going to be a girl, well, that she was a girl, what did you, did you guys start thinking of names or did you already have kind of a running list? Yeah. I, <sighs> I can't remember exactly. We had like a list of na like girl names mm -hmm. that we had thought of back when we were pregnant with Harrison. Okay. And I'm I don't know if Adrian was ever on the list or not, but I know that we went through that list and kind of thought like you know, we're trying to narrow it down, but um <laughs> we kind of we're kind of nerds when it comes to like <laughs> favorite movies, like oh, pop culture a yeah, little bit. Yeah. And so Harrison's name actually comes from Harrison Ford. Oh. I think Harrison Ford is awesome. He is a great actor. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. I think and like in his old age, he's so funny, like oh. so cranky. Yeah. Like, he is such a crotchety old man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I love it. And so Harrison, I mean, he's maybe not necessarily, like maybe not necessarily named after Harrison Ford, but definitely like inspired. Really liked that name. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so when we thought of Adrian's name, that came from the Rocky movies. I was wondering about yeah. that because I was like, yeah. Adrian is, yeah, I was going to yeah. I love the Rocky movies. Growing up, like in high school especially, yeah. I had like a long kick where I just Watched. was obsessed with them. And I'm like, Mom, I need to watch every single one of no them. No way. I like, she gave them, like she gave me the set of like the first four, I think, uh -huh. for Christmas one year. I was a huge, I, mean, I still am. Yes. But it like definitely started in high school. Oh, and that so. is so crazy. And yeah. it's fun. I mean, like, yeah. so you guys are movie buffs too. It sounds yes. like you yeah. guys really like watching movies. And like, Rocky is an older movie. So I just <laughs> right. think that's so funny. You stumbled upon it or. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how. I mean, I'm sure like Rocky was on TV all the yeah. time. And yeah. I just, I think I just saw the first one and I was like, wow. That was this inspiring. Is, this is so amazing. I don't even like sports movies. Yeah. I'm not even like a boxing fan, but the Rocky movies. <laughs> You're like, I am I'm there. a huge fan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so fun. Okay. So Adrian is the first name. And then I, th I think Jewel is a beautiful name. Yeah. Um, Jewel came from, it's the maiden name of one of my ancestors. Oh. So she was pioneers uh -huh. that like came across the country. And she, so her name was Anne Jewel. Oh, that. 
is a beautiful name. Yeah, yeah. And so she she came across the country with seven kids and her husband had passed away before they had like made the journey. Oh, man. So she's just this amazing, strong woman, like that in my family. was history. also very inspiring. Yeah, too. very inspiring. And so, yeah, we just we had to have that as her middle name. That is that's I think they're beautiful. It's, it just is a beautiful name yeah, all beautiful. together. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Okay, so you had fun names. Um, Did you tell Harrison? Was he aware of what was going on? Because he's still pretty little. Yeah, I mean, he was, I guess he was two when we, yeah, like two and a half Mm -hmm. when we got pregnant with her. Um, By the time we lost her, he was three. Mm -hmm. He's also, he's on the autism spectrum. And so there are some things that like are, he's just a little bit slower at comprehending. Yeah. So at the time, like it it really didn't like sink in at all. Gotcha. Um. But he definitely knew, like, when we lost her, Mm -hmm. he definitely knew that something was up. And maybe he couldn't, like, exactly pinpoint it or, like, he wasn't at an age yet where we could, like, explain things to him and he wouldn't understand. Yeah. But, I mean, it did. uh, I mean, he could feel just, like, the different in the atmosphere in our home after we lost her. But he wasn't. I don't think he was ever, like, understood. Understood. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So you guys are going along and feeling good. Feeling good? Yeah. Any morning sickness or? I am super lucky. I don't get morning sickness. Oh, yeah, you are super lucky. <laughs> I know. I I don't get that at all. I I had like really bad sciatica with my mm. first pregnancy. Okay. And then it kind of came and went when I was pregnant with Adrian. But I don't, I don't feel like I can complain yeah. that much. I mean, at the time, I complained a lot. <laughs> But so now, now that I realize, like, I, I am super lucky because I don't get sick. Yeah. I mean, it's just the regular aches and pains of mm-hmm. pregnancy. Just that isn't fun, but. Yeah. But in general, it was fairly yeah. Yeah. decent. Yeah. Sounds like. Great. That's nice. <laughs> I know. And as you were getting a little bit. Cl- okay. So um, she was born in November. So you guys yeah. are um getting closer. So, like, as you get closer to her due date, how. How all the all of your appointments were checking out? Were you doing any kind of stress tests, stress tests, um, to make sure heart rate was looking good and and all that jazz? No, we didn't. Yeah, I mean, she never gave us any indication that anything was ever off. Mm-hmm. There was never anything that came up that would have alerted us, and so I never did stress tests. Every appointment that I had, she was always looking good. Mm-hmm. You know, when you get closer to the end and you have an appointment like every week. You know? Yes, it's more frequent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, you know, I just think about the week previous to my last appointment. Because mm-hmm. it was it was my at my last appointment that we found out that she had passed. Oh. So I just think about like the, the appointment that I had the week previous, how everything was fine. Everything like was she and then it's just crazy. Like within that week, within that week, mm-hmm. you know, we don't really know what happened. Yeah. I would always get curious. Do you? Were you kind of tracking any of her movements, any like kind of kit, uh, kit counting, that type of thing? Yeah. I never, so with my first, I never felt the need to even count his kicks at all. He was moving the entire oh, time. Oh, okay. So he Harrison, was super active. Harrison was super active. And so with Adrian's pregnancy, I kind of just, like I wasn't yeah. in the habit of counting kicks. Um, But she did, she moved a lot too. Okay. And then as we, that last week, before we found out that she had passed, mm-hmm. she did slow down with her movement. Mm. And, you know, this is something that, you know, I've had like a couple of years now to like kind of come to terms and like process and <laughs> and really realize that there probably wasn't anything that I could have done. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as it was fresh, I, I just keep think I, I kept thinking about how I wish I would have been more alert to her decreased movement. And at the time, I kind of assumed that it was just because she had gotten bigger. bigger. And so she had that people. That's what people had told that's me. That's what like, people say. Your baby gets bigger. They slow down with moving. And again, that wasn't something that I had experienced with Harrison. Harrison was super tiny when he was born. He was five pounds, four ounces. Okay. So I don't like he never ran out of room. Like we went to the very end of the pregnancy and he was just. He still had plenty. Okay. Yeah. And so with Adrian, I thought, well, she's I think that she's she bigger. is bigger. So she, this must be she's running out of room. and. Slowing down with moving. And so that's kind of what I thought. But like we had made it to, I think it was Halloween. 
where I like that whole day, I was like, wow, I don't think that I've felt her move at all today. And it like that was kind of what set off the alarms for me a little bit. Um, But like I sat down, I ate some dinner and I felt a little bit of movement. It's like, okay, like she's there. She's good. Um, And then that's how the next few days after that went. And I just. I just was so oblivious to like the world of stillbirth and it was not something that had ever like touched anybody that I knew or that I was close to. And it just, it wasn't on my radar at all. And so, you know, I, I wish, of course, I wish that I could go back and like scream at myself and say, like, go to your doctor. Like, (laughs) yeah, you notice the decreased movement, like go see him. But I, I didn't. So on Halloween, you, you did, you noticed the decreased movement, but you just kind of, you know, that's what you do. You kind of chalk Mm -hmm. it up to not having enough space. And, but then you kind of maybe felt her in the evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then after that, um, what happened after that? Like the next day? Um, The next few days were pretty similar where like, I would feel her move like a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just kind of thought. I didn't think much of it. And at the time we were going through, I mean, everybody has stuff going on yeah. all the time. We were going through a lot of stuff with my, because I mentioned that my son is on the autism spectrum. right? And so at the time he wasn't diagnosed, but I was, like, we, it was like that whole week. I was also trying to set up things to get him evaluated gotcha. with the school district. And it wasn't even being evaluated for autism. It was just like, I was Maybe saying like, and, and like, he's yeah. delayed and I need help. And yes. it was this whole like, I was doing a lot of stuff with pediatricians and with the school district. And so I like my mind was very much pulled away from Mm -hmm. just paying attention or yeah, being still because those (laughs) we have done a number of like tests for our son, too, just because he has some speech like a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. So you're like, yeah, it does take it takes a a lot out of you. (laughs) Yep. There's a lot of phone calls. There's a lot of sitting on the phone waiting for Uh people to pick up and a lot of stress. Yeah, or like to make sure that you get into the right person, mm-hmm. and so yes, I can understand that being uh, something that would take your attention away. Yeah, from kind of what's happening. And can you remind me again what week this is in your pregnancy? Um, this would have been my thirty eighth week. Okay. Yeah, she was like thirty eight weeks and five days, I think. Okay, so when- you are definitely getting closer, and yeah, uh, you are going in weekly and if not even more than that were you going in I think I was just going weekly weekly okay because yeah. everything was looking good I mean yeah. everything was fine okay so um really the next few days were similar to that of Halloween yeah so then um you go in for your 39th week mm-hmm. appointment yeah what uh, and was Parker going with you to no, those appointments he wasn't all? okay and that's something that will always be sad about yeah I mean getting the news at that appointment was super hard like oh, by myself by yourself and yeah. he wasn't and it was super hard for him to like yeah. have to hear it at work and to you know he felt devastated that he wasn't there with me it was different <laughs> this last pregnancy he made sure that he was he there was at there every appointment everything. yeah no but he but he didn't he came to the, like the 20 week anatomy scan yeah but other than that it was just me yeah and that I guess that's pretty typical right yeah, I mean right. a lot of people for the first one, maybe yes. And after that, I was like, oh, everything's fine. So, right. yeah. So when you went to that appointment, um, can you just tell me how that that happened? Well, I think part of this that like is important to know is that so this was November 4th and I had a scheduled C-section to have her on November 8th. Oh, so I had Harrison uh-huh. via C-section as well. He was an emergency C-section. Okay. So this time around with Adrian, like we just, I talked with my doctor. We felt comfortable with doing a C-section again. It worked really well for me the first time. I recovered super well. And so I was like, you know what? Let's just do it again. We felt good about it. So we had her scheduled for November 8th C-section. So I go in November 4th. You know, it's just four days before Mm -hmm. we're supposed to have her and take her home. And like, I remember going in and sitting on the table and the nurse, you know, they always ask questions. And, you know, she asked the question, have you been feeling movement if you've been feeling the baby kick and I just said well no like not as much not as frequent and like this is COVID so like everybody's wearing their masks Mm -hmm. so like I don't really get to see her face but like I just see her eyes and she just like 
just oh. like looks at me with like this very like intense kind of like all of a sudden like she's super focused and I, I don't know like I just I didn't think much of it until like you know she had me lay down and as she's trying to search for the heartbeat she can't find anything mm-hmm. and it's it's just silent and I'm sitting there and I'm like I'm feeling like the panic start to rise in my chest right like I don't know like it it, it felt like she was searching for a minute. Yeah. And at one point I just, I, I was feeling so nervous and it was probably a really stupid thing to say, but I, I like, I looked at her and I'm just like, oh, this is, that's probably not a good sign. Right. And she just was like, well, just wait here. You know, like she, the nurse can't say anything. Yeah. Right. They can't. So she just said, well, just wait here. She left. Another nurse came in. She tried again for what felt like forever. Mm. I didn't find a heartbeat. And so then she left. And then my doctor came in. And he came in with, you know, the little portable the little ultrasound, ultrasound machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, he confirmed that, you know, when I could see her, like, on the screen, I could see her little head. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he confirmed that she didn't have a heartbeat. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um. Yeah, it is. That news is the worst that I can. I, I just don't want to imagine being there by myself either. I, yeah. I'm so sorry. I mean, luckily, I I have an amazing OBGYN and he was so great to just, you know, he, he said, you know, she, yeah, her, she's gone. I'm so sorry. And he looked at me and he said, Rebecca, I'm so sorry. We were so close. <laughs> he said, I don't. I'm so sorry. And I, like, the only thing that I could say back to him was just, you know, I'm, like, sobbing. Yeah. And I, the only thing I could say back was just, why? Why? Like, and that was, I think that that was the only thing I said to him the whole time. Like, I just, I was sobbing. And he was really great to just, you know, he hugged me. And he sat there with me for as long as I needed. And I remember he talked to me. He, you know, he said some probably, like, comforting things I don't remember what he said but he was just there to be with me and you know I don't feel like he you know what's crazy about you know this whole memory that I have of finding out that she was gone was that day as I was waiting in the waiting room it was like one of the busiest days I've ever seen like at my OBGYN usually it's not that crowded but there were so many other women in the waiting room and I had waited like maybe 30 minutes to get in so I had like had to wait for a long time and I'm an anxious person sometimes and I like I always want to like I'm always just aware of like not wanting to waste people's time like wanting other people to like have their chance their chance to see the doctor like I don't want other people running late like and so I remember just having a thought like there are so many people out there in the waiting room and like they're already running so late and My doctor is sitting here just so patient with me. He's not trying to rush me out. He's not trying to get me out because he clearly has so many other appointments. And, you know, like the most important thing to him in that moment was just to make sure that I had a chance to just sit and process. And um, his his most important job at that moment was to just comfort me in the best way that he could. Yeah. So that, I don't know, that's something that has always really stuck out to me. It's just like the crowded ra- waiting room, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It was, yeah. this is important. I was very kind to, and generous to, yeah, because doctors are, they can be so busy. Right. Uh, did you guys, did he, did they just encourage you to call Parker right away? Um, what was that yeah. like? Or did he start talking? I'm assuming he probably waited to have Parker come or... To well, talk about what you guys were going to do? A little bit. So after I, we, you know, I'd sat for a while. He talked to me for a bit. Um, he did say, like, you know, he did have to bring up, you know, how we were going to go about delivering her. And he said that, you know, likely we could deliver her the same day, but he was going to have to go and make arrangements. And so he said, you right. know, how about I leave? And he needed to go call hospital and set things up because I still decided I wanted to go ahead with just a C-section. C-section. Okay. So he he left to call the hospital and he said, call your husband, see if he can get here or just tell him what happened. And so I called Parker. I called him maybe four or five times and he wouldn't answer. He was at work. He had Harrison with him that day at work. 
Oh, typically we have like family that can watch Harrison, mm -hmm. like if I have an appointment or something. But that day we didn't have anybody to watch him, so Parker had just brought him into work with him. Yeah, and just he's gonna yeah. hang out and yeah, yeah, and it you know not a big deal. Um, but I had called Parker like four or five times. I I just didn't know what to do. Like my mind is scrambled, and I so I sat in that room for a long time. Like I like kept calling him, kept calling him. And I finally just like packed up my stuff and was like, okay, I'll just drive. I'll go, I'll, like, I'll drive to his work and tell him because I don't know what else to do. I can't get a hold of him. Yeah. And so I, you know, I come out of the, the doctor's room and there's a nurse right there and she offers to drive me to, par to Parker's work. And I was like, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll drive. I'll drive as I'm like sobbing. So I like, I rush out of the doctor's office and, you know, I get down to the parking lot. And as, as I'm getting into my car, Parker calls me back. So I'm in my car as I have to tell him that she's gone. She doesn't have a heart. And just every time that we had to tell somebody, but of course, calling Parker was oh. hard. I don't, there's no like soft way to say it. Like, yeah. it's just, she's gone. She's died. And I, I remember Parker asking why, like the same, same question, question that I asked why. And I said, we don't know. Like. You know, we'll probably find out later. But he was really, really choked up on the other end. And I just remember him saying, there's no, no baby. Like, she's, she's gone. And, and, and then we both just, you know, broke down and sobbed. And so he had to make arrangements to leave work. And we found family to watch Harrison for. Um, just all of those moments feel like you're watching somebody else living, mm -hmm. live them. Yeah. It's so out of body. Yeah. And so he, I, we met each other at home. Okay. I drove home. He drove home. And then we waited for a call from the hospital to tell us when we could go in. And, you know, you have to fast a little bit before you have a C-section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so luckily, like I had already, my appointment was that morning. And so I had, anyway, we had a good window where that like I had already fine. hadn't eaten. So, um. You know, we went to the hospital and delivered her later that evening. Okay. So when uh, you guys were together, did so, and you still had Harrison when you guys met up at um, home, or were you, was he Parker able to? Parker had dropped Harrison off okay. at um, my sister, brother and sister-in-law's house. Okay. And I think, you know, Parker told them, like, <gasps> we just found out that we lost the baby. Yeah. Can you watch Harrison for us? And that was like a shell shock for them, too. They're yes. just like, okay. Yes, like, we'll, yes. Okay, we'll watch Harrison. And yeah. You know, hearing their story about it, like, later, you know, you know, they've said that it's, they didn't really, like, know, like, they, or they, like, didn't really, like, understand what Parker was telling them at first, and right. it, like, didn't really sink in. Yeah. Because it's, once again, not on, any, it's not no. on anybody's radar. No, and it's not something that our family has ever experienced. really experienced at all. Like, you know, brothers and sisters. Right. Like, nobody's experienced a stillbirth before. So, just out of the blue. Yeah. And so you guys were at home um, together. Uh, what did you guys do in that time while you were waiting for the call from the hospital to? We, um, well, we realized that we probably needed to call our parents. And so, okay, you know, I, I had already made arrangements for my mom to watch Harrison for us. Okay. And it, she wasn't, she was supposed to watch him on the 8th when Adrian when, was supposed yes. to come. Yeah. And so I knew that I was going to need her help. And watching Harrison, you know, my brother and sister-in-law had him for just that short period of time, but mm -hmm. I knew that my mom was going to need to come and help. And so Parker called my dad. I called my mom. My mom was at work at the time. Mm -hmm. And like, she knew that we were going to have Adrian on the 8th, but we we were also aware that Adrian could still come before that time. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, I had told my mom, like, you know, just, you know, keep your phone on you because she might come before. And yeah. so I might have to ask you for help sooner. And so I, she, um, she's a paraeducator at a, an elementary school. Okay. And so she doesn't usually have her cell phone on her all the time. So I called her cell phone and she didn't answer. So I thought, oh my gosh, call the school. The front desk yeah, the front of the desk. school. Mm -hmm. So I called the front desk of the school. And of course it's the secretary of the school is somebody that I know. Like this is, because. this is in the town that I grew up in yeah. and. And she was so friendly and nice. And she's like, oh, my gosh, Rebecca, hi. Like, so good to hear you. And I'm just like this 
<laughs> shell of like I, I like I'm dead. I feel like I'm dead. Yeah. And I, you know, I just I probably wasn't that friendly, but I, you know, I just said I need to talk to my mom. Can you can you let just like call down to the classroom and tell my mom, call me on her cell phone. And so then my mom calls me back and she's like, she sounds really excited. Yeah, like she, she was a little bit breathless. Yeah. And she's, I can hear her like, I think she was like packing stuff up or like she was moving around or something. And she thought that she was going to be coming right now because we were having mm -hmm. her baby that, you know, she thought she was alive. And I just had to tell my mom that, you know, we, we lost Adrian and her heart stopped beating and we don't know why. And, you know, then to hear my mom break down and to start sobbing and then my mom just, I'm, you know, it's just you remember what every single person says. And so my mom's response was, what happened as yeah. she's like sobbing? And again, I have to tell her, I don't know. I don't know what happened. And so she just said, OK, I, I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. I'll come down. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> so she came. She came. Her and my dad came to our house. And uh, my in-laws were out of town at the time. Oh. But we let them know. OK. Um, so all so, your family, I just want to clarify that all of yeah. your family is pretty nearby to each other. Yeah, yeah, okay. we're all pretty close. My in-laws, they live in the same town that we do, and my parents live like 30 minutes away from yeah. us. So we're all pretty close, and they, you know, yeah. they can all get to us pretty fast. So my parents came, and then we just, Harrison's still with his aunt and uncle. Yeah. And it was just, you know, my mom and dad, me and Parker, the four of us, just like sitting in our living room, like, like. I feel like that time is kind of blurry. Like, I don't, I think we just sat in silence. Like, we didn't really know what to do or say. We're all just shell-shocked. Yeah. I know for me, like, I was just stuck with thinking about how it just felt like all of our plans had been, like, destroyed in an instant. <laughs> yeah. And, it, like, our whole life was just, like, turned upside down. Our, like, yeah. kind of like the the plan that we had for our lives uh, like the very loose plan that we had for mm -hmm. ourselves was just like upturned and it I just didn't know what to do yeah it really is so shocking to be just because you have yeah you you have plans mm -hmm. and even though like you said it's kind of a loose plan you still have a plan and yeah you know you have this vision of what your family's gonna look like and and an instant it's, it's not it's not the way that we I know. And when you said we just sat around in, in silence and I was like, that, that is exactly because nobody knows what to say. Mm -hmm. It's it's terrible. Like, yeah. that's all there is to it. We all just sat there. I I do remember like talking with my mom. I don't know. We made some kind of arrangement that she was going to take Harrison. OK. And so I had like I had put off doing his laundry because I was going to do it that weekend yeah. right before. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, man, I have laundry. So I'm like, <gasps> I'm like going into his room and getting his hamper and my mom is telling me, don't do that. Like, I'll do it. Like, but like, it just, it felt like I still had to do like very menial tasks during the worst moment of my life. Like life was still going on and I still needed to like make sure that my son was taken care of. I still yeah. needed to make sure that he needed, like that he had clean underwear for yep. him to wear. And it was a really, really weird yeah, juxtaposition between yeah, yeah. just this, yeah, life-altering event and, and very basic event. laundry. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It really is. What did Parker's parents say when you guys told them? Um, I know that they were on vacation, so or they were out of town, and they were. I don't remember a lot. I know he was the one who called them. I remember that they were heartbroken too, and they were. Um, they were just across the country visiting some of their other kids oh, okay. that live on the other side of the country. Yeah. And um, they decided to just cut their trip short and they were going to head home. Back. And yeah, so they were, they drove all the way up. Oh. So they were going to be driving all the way back. So they, they hopped in the truck and they started driving back across the country as soon as they were able to. Yeah. Um, but they were, they were devastated as well. Asked the same questions. Why? Yeah. Why? What happened? And. You know, I'm I'm sure people were thinking like, well, did Rebecca like, did she fall? Like, did I have an accident? Did something? And yeah. we were like, nothing, nothing happened. Yeah. Like, I've been good this whole time. Like, there was never like I I just showed up to my appointment and they told me that she's that she's gone. <laughs> like, I it was hard. Like, you know, we're telling all of our family like we we're just as confused as you. We don't know. We don't know what's. Yeah. 
And that is hard when you just feel like you don't have any answers or anything. Yeah. Because, yeah, people want to fill in the blanks and find an excuse for things. Uh, when the, when did the hospital finally call um, you guys to come in? I mean, I think it was like an hour after we got back from okay. my appointment. They called. They told me you know, where to go, what to expect. And I, I don't remember the exact time that we went in. Like I said, like some of those memories, like some stand out so clearly, yes. like the laundry and then other things like, like whatever going idea. to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Like that is also blurry. But I know that we, we waited a few hours and then we, yep, we showed up to the hospital and they had like, obviously already like the whole hospital, staff, you know, all the labor and delivery staff mm-hmm. knew about our situation right. and they had, you know, two nurses that were ready for me and that was oh, good. ready to take. They took the best care of me, and they were so sensitive. Good. We, I, the way that the hospital approached our stillbirth was really, really, it really meant a lot. Just they were, that they, they were kind. They didn't, they weren't pushy. They, um, it just, I mean, as good as a stillbirth, yes, <laughs> can go. Of course, I, I was very grateful for the way that they approached. So you went in and. I've had a C-section with one of our daughter with our daughter, and so I know that they usually take you back, and then mm-hmm. the husband comes in a little bit later. Is that kind of the setup that they yeah that you do as yeah. well? So I like you go in and you sit down on the hospital bed, and you know they have to do all the prep, like yeah, putting the IV. You know, I think that they take some of your blood. I have to do the Rogam. Mm-hmm. I think that they give you a second shot of Rogam. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, like right before you deliver. That's what happened with my last one. I don't know. Yeah. But they do all the prep things. You have to drink like a stomach acid neutralizer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of that stuff. And so, you know, Parker was with me for all of that. But then they do take me back. Um, Get the nerve block put in yeah, probably. Like the, uh, yeah. Yeah. The nerves. The spinal. The yeah. spinal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then once all of that is done, then that's when Parker was back. Mm-hmm. And he was there. And how did that part go? Um, I mean, it was really hard. It was, yeah, because my first C-section experience was, I mean, the first experience was scary because it was an emergency. Right. But it, you know, it ended with, you know. Harrison. Harrison. And, he, you know, they, they pulled him from me and he was screaming and yeah. crying. Um, and it, it was different this time. And. The, the hospital, you know, my doctor was so quiet. Like, they were only saying, like, the minimal, the, you know, just, just communicating with each other. But, you know, in my other two C-section experiences, I can now, I can compare that, like, this last one that I had, they were you know, kind of talking, you know, catching up with each other. You know, there was, like, a much lighter atmosphere. Yes, but completely. With, with Adrian, it was very somber, very quiet. And, you know, they were just, you know, giving directions to each other or, you know, explaining what they were doing. And the whole time, Parker and I were waiting there and we were just hoping <laughs> that they were wrong and that they'd pull her from me and that we would hear her cry. <laughs> and we didn't. <laughs> and I, I told my doctor that later and he he said, yeah, I was really hoping too. I wanted that. I wanted that miracle. But but we knew. We all knew that it was, that's not what it was going to be. But You still have that <laughs> yeah. like irrational hope yeah. that just like, Please, like, let every single person be wrong. Like, yeah. let let her still be alive. Um, so it was really just devastating to have her be removed from me and to not hear her and to know with like absolute finality that that we had lost her. Yeah. How big was she? She was seven pounds, 14 ounces. Oh, she was big. Yeah, she was really chunky. And it was a shock compared to my son, uh-huh. who was five pounds, four ounces. Yeah. So we were like, wow, like what? <laughs> what was the difference there? Like, I feel like I did the same things both pregnancy, yeah. but she got so chunky. Oh. And how long was she? Oh, like 19 and a half. Oh, yeah. So she's, she was good size. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then did you guys uh, name her then when you guys yeah. 
Had you guys been referring to her as Adrian up until that point already? Yeah. Yeah, we knew that she was Adrian. We hadn't told. With Harrison and Adrian, we had kept their names. Just secret. between you guys? Yeah, okay. just between Parker and I. Um, so my, my parents, the rest of the family, they all found out that, you know, she was named Adrian mm-hmm. after we had her. But but we, we always knew, like, that she was from pretty early on. Yeah. How was the C-section, though, just in general for you? Yeah. Did, um, did they stitch you up and everything? And yeah, I got stitched fine? up. Everything was fine. I did have an allergic reaction. So, and I, I realized, like, so when you go into for an emergency C-section, they, they like, just quickly, like, sanitize your skin mm-hmm, with, mm-hmm. An iodine? Yeah, it's kind of a, yeah. Yeah, that's what they use. So, like, with Harrison, like, I didn't have any problems. But when it's a planned C-section, they prep you with something called chloroprep, I think. Uh I didn't know that. I've never had chloroprep used on me before. So they used the chloroprep. And then a couple days later, I I had a, I broke out in hives, like, all over my stomach. Oh, no. And so in the midst of grieving Adrian, um, we were planning her graveside. Yeah. I had to find a dermatologist <laughs> and get help with like this horrible allergic oh. reaction on my skin on top of just like being sore from the C-section. Yes, of course. You know, sore because my milk has come in, yeah. but I, you know, yeah, There's having no- to, you know, mm-hmm. block it off. So it was just it was just like icing on the cake. Like of course of course, I have an allergic reaction on top of all of this other terrible stuff. Oh, I'm so sorry. But I mean, the recovery of the C-section, that all, it all went great. Yeah. Um, minus the. Minus that. Minus couple the rack. days later. How long did you stay in the hospital? Because they usually keep yeah. C-sections in for a little bit longer. Yes. I think that we were there for three days. Okay. And we were able to have Adrian with us for two days. Oh, wonderful. They have like the um kind of a cuddle cot I, I, yeah, or yes, a cuddle cot. Okay, they did. Okay. I couldn't remember. Yeah. So like she was there like with the cooling pad with yeah. her and um I felt a little bit lucky because we had to stay in the hospital for a longer time that we had two whole days to be with her. Yeah, that is a long time and I think that is super special. That's Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of times they have a very specific, okay, it's it's only this many hours or this mm-hmm. this is how long you get her. That is that is lucky. <laughs> so uh, they they get her out. Did you guys have a plan of how after the C section was going to look like? Did you want her wrapped up and and brought to you guys, or how was that? I I just yeah. we've actually never had anybody do a C section. I don't think on our podcast. Oh, wow. and, well, in the sense of like, uh, yeah, I I'm trying to think. Maybe maybe we have, and I'm just blanking it out. But I. Yeah, we just, it's it's kind of rare because they usually just say vaginal birth is better. It's better right. recovery and stuff. And so to yeah. have somebody with a C section is kind of unusual for us to talk to you. So, um, so did they um take her and clean her up, or how did that look for yeah. you guys? Yep, they cleaned her up a little bit. They weighed her for us, mm-hmm. and um, just the same as they do, yeah, like with the live, you know, the same thing that they did with Harrison. Yeah, they wrapped her all up, and they, I, they may have asked. You know, like, are you in a place where you want to hold her right now? Right. And I did. I wanted her. And so as soon as I was moved, like, from the operating table to a bed, the hospital uh, yeah. bed, mm-hmm. they, like, immediately placed her in my arms, all wrapped up. And then from there, like, I was wheeled all the way back to the labor. I stayed on the labor and delivery floor. They okay. didn't move me to, like, the... The um, recovery or whatever. The rec- like, the yeah. mother-child room. Yeah. They kept me in labor and delivery, um, which just is to be sensitive. Also, yeah. very nice. Yeah, that is also so that very I didn't nice. have to hear all these yeah. newborn baby babies crying yeah. while I. So, yeah, they immediately gave her to me, and you know she was just we. I you know I held her as much as I could for that whole two days. Good, you should. <laughs> and Parker and I traded off. He, yes, of he course, held her I guess. a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> what did she look like? Who did she look like? I don't. No, I I think all of our kids are a good mix of us. Oh, I think uh-huh. that she was a good mix, too. I mean, she had features that reminded me of my son. Oh. You know, like, oh, like she looks yeah. like her older brother a little bit. Um, I think that she was a good mix. Just, 
chubbiest cheeks though. Harrison did not have chubby cheeks. <laughs> and Adrian's cheeks just bulged like jowls. Oh. Like, <laughs> yeah, she was so chubby. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. That is wonderful. So were you guys had you guys thought about what you were going to do in that time? Um, any kind of memories that you wanted to make or things that you wanted to do to make sure that you got to spend some nice time with her? I don't know. We were just going like literally minute by minute. Like we mm. just didn't, we didn't know what to do. But, you know, we were told by several people, like take as many photos as you can. Okay. And we did, like we had the bereavement specialist come in and oh, she no. took photos for us. That's great. Yeah. And then my sister-in-law contacted a photographer that she knew and she sent this photographer out to us she took photos of adrian for us and 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 then on top of that we were taking pictures and trying to think yeah so we had lots of pictures being taken and like in the moment i remember thinking like do i do i want all of this like do i want like my worst day like the yeah the worst day of my life record yeah like but you know Obviously, I'm really, really glad that that yeah. was all documented in such detail because, you know, those were the only days that we had with her. But but I remember in the moment thinking, like, I I don't want people in my face. I don't want cameras in my face. Like, I am miserable. I am a wreck. Like, I don't want to be a part of these photos. Yeah. But, but I I am grateful yeah. that we did that. We did, Yeah, we just took lots of pictures and... That was, that was, <laughs> we couldn't like really think of anything else to do. I, I mean, most of the time we just sat silent and numb. Yeah. Having had no other loss like that in your family, like you wouldn't have, you, you wouldn't have any ideas of what to do. Like I, I think yeah. it's, it's still just, yeah, it's always surprising because that was one thing I, because we had not ever had a loss in our family that mm-hmm. I knew of. And it was, we really did just, we sat around and held our son and, and that was it. Like a lot of people were like, we read books and sang songs. And I was like, yeah, we didn't do well, that. I didn't, I didn't do any of that. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. And it, and it was what it was. And that is, and that's fine. Cause that is your experience that you had with her. You guys, uh, what time did you deliver her that day? It was in the evening. I okay. think by the time that she came, it was like. A- in the evening. Okay. I, I know that the exact time is written down. Yeah remember did you guys get any sleep that first night because uh, they gave me ambien okay <laughs> so i was gonna I say i like i can imagine you were just on a like uh, that the, so many yeah. emotions so much probably adrenaline pumping through mm-hmm. your body that you probably <laughs> crashed after i personally yeah. would have been like okay i'm done i need to just right veg out i think that i probably would have fallen asleep without the ambien too because like you said there was so much going on and like i had just been through so much the third you know on top of like all the emotional stuff but just getting a surgery yes it's major surgery everybody for your body <laughs> yeah and so but my doctor did come in and say i'm gonna i'm gonna prescribe you with some ambient like i just need you to sleep yeah so i i did get some sleep that night and parker and stayed parker at the hospital stayed. too i'm yeah. assuming on a pull-out couch or yeah, something he slept on that little yeah <laughs> the little chair bed that everybody complains about yep. mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah it's good fun And then the next day you guys were, um, you still had Adrian with you. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, Did people, were other people able to come and visit you? Because we're still in the middle. I guess it's not in the middle of the pandemic per se, but a little bit kind of on the tail tail end. end So were people able to come? Because hospital policies were all over the place, it seemed like. Right. And I don't know what the policy was. I I feel like I have a vague memory of somebody saying like, make an exception for you guys I don't I I I honestly don't know if that's what happened but I have like some kind of memory there that someone at some point said well we'll let you guys have more people in yes okay um and we didn't even know at first if we wanted family to come I you know at first I at first I really didn't want anybody to come okay I felt like she's my baby she's not anybody else's like this is my time with her and I don't want yeah. Anybody else here with her. But that very quickly changed because I realized that this is the only time that she's going to be here. And I want people to know that she existed. Yeah. You know, I and I'm so glad that we did have 
our families come in and see her because it made it real for them. Yes. And yes. and she became real for them. It, it wasn't just this baby that we had that nobody ever got to see yep. and and you know a burial a burial plot for her, but you know we see the headstone, but we never see the baby. It wasn't like that. Like yeah. we had you know brothers and sisters in law and my brothers and our parents and Parker's parents couldn't make it to the hospital before we left, but they did. They were able to see her um, at the mortuary. Oh, good. Right. So we did. We we wanted our family to see. Her. We wanted them to see her. that she was our baby still, and that mm. I wanted people to know what she looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted people to know she was real. Yeah, I. That's what you do when you are a proud mom who yeah. just like I gave birth to a baby. I want you to see her. Yeah. So yes, of course that is so natural to do that. I think that's awesome that all well, so much of your family got to to come and and be with her. Yeah, we were really really glad to have those and those moments with our family members were super <laughs> special too. I mean, really hard, but um, super special. <laughs> that was um, gosh, our family went through a lot during this time, and uh, my husband's brother he was fighting cancer. Oh. And he ended up passing away um, a little less than, um, or a little over a month after we lost Adrian. Oh, man. And he came to the hospital to see her. And that was one of our, uh, our last memories of him before he really, really started to go Get really, downhill. really sick. Oh. Yeah. And so that was, it's a really special memory for us yeah. um, to have that moment with him. And with Adrian. And, you know, it was right after Halloween. And he, he I remember him bringing this flower pot. Um, you know, he brought flowers for us. And it was in, like, this pumpkin vase. And Harrison was obsessed with pumpkins at the time. <laughs> like, kids on the autism spectrum get, like, super fixated on things. Um, okay. And just, like. Gravitate towards it. Yes. Like that. <laughs> just, like, his, like, their favorite things are just, like amplified by a million and so Harrison was super into pumpkins and my brother-in-law his name was Sterling he he like purposely picked out this pot of flowers that was in a pumpkin for Harrison he's like I got this because I thought of Harrison and how obsessed he is with pumpkins and that was our that was my last um memory of him really like being there and capable and and capable of like still you know We did see him after that a few more times, but he was not quite the same after yeah. that. So that, it was it was just a really special moment. It was really with him and with all of our family who came. Yeah, I am always so grateful for that time because it you you're like my baby was like my he had a baby and part of our family. Yeah, and I want to make sure that they meet the meet rest your kids, of their family, their yeah. cousins. Yeah. <laughs> In that time that you guys were in the hospital, did your um, OBGYN come in and, and talk to you guys? And was there any sort of indication when they were doing the C-section about what had happened or just in their observation? Because I don't know if you got an autopsy or uh, wanted to get an autopsy. Right. Um, so like right after I had the C-section, my doctor, I think he pulled Parker aside at first and and then later told me the same thing that everything looked really good. Oh. I didn't have any issue. You know, there was nothing yeah. wrong with all of my like stuff the placenta, in there. Placenta, yeah. cord. He did mention, it was a random fact, but it, like, it didn't play into Adrian passing at all, but he said that her cord was a little bit shorter mm. than normal. But, but like, it wasn't wrapped around it, or it wasn't, anything. No, like, there was no accident with it. Like, and he, like, there was no way that, like, a, a slightly smaller cord could have, like, played into her yeah. passing it, it was just kind of like a random like oh, that's like an interesting detail but but that know, was all that doesn't yeah yeah it's so like right off the bat there was nothing and we did pretty much every like test that you could do outside of an autopsy okay I don't remember what they're all called but I know that we did like a genetic test yes and, okay oh I had like my placenta tested mm-hmm. um and everything came back normal everything was fine and so we were 
given the option of having an autopsy and my OBGYN brought it up and he, you know, he didn't want to push us one way or another. Mm -hmm. Um, but he, he did say that oftentimes it's pretty common for families to get an autopsy done and then to still not have any, yeah, to not have any kind of answer. Um, so we, we decided pretty quick that we didn't want an autopsy. It didn't feel like, especially since everything else, like there was no indication that this would be like a, an issue, like in later pregnancies for me. It felt like we didn't think that the autopsy would give us any information that gotcha. would change things. Like okay. This. So we chose not to do it. And I, I don't regret that. I don't think that. Maybe there would have been something come up, but again, like her twenty week anatomy scan was looked perfect, good too. So, yeah, we didn't, we didn't do that. Yeah, and I think, I think you make the decision that makes the most sense for your family and and what. Right. Yeah, because you just don't. I yeah, I I do the same thing. I was like, should I? Should we have done that? Because we essentially did like a partial autopsy, like you really? guys did, tested the placenta, yeah. tested like the cord, and did genetic testing but it was not anything yeah we didn't get anything much more than that either and it's so frustrating yeah. then you're left feeling like so, i don't know what like could i have done something differently right. like then was it me like at some point you know it just like this whole time i'm like racking my brain like what did i do wrong yes what did i do wrong because we can't figure this out like there yeah. we can't find anything wrong with her so what was it that i was doing wrong yeah yeah and there was nothing you know like like Logically, I understand that, like, I don't, I was just, I was just living my best pregnant life, you yeah. know, doing everything I was supposed to do, avoiding everything I was supposed to avoid. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, that is frustrating. Yeah. That when your, your mind goes into the, the why, why did this happen? What did I do wrong? Like right. spiral. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. Um, okay. So you guys were, um, finally discharged when the time came to give back adrian tell me how you guys how that went down so she was taken like the night before we left so okay we like had her for two whole days so like the night of the second day i guess okay the mortician came and we like my husband has a connection the mortician that's oh, okay. in okay. our just, hometown. Yeah, just knows yeah. them. Like, and... They're like family friends. Okay. And so like he act, like he came out himself and oh. was, you know, chatted. I, I didn't know him, but Parker knew him. So like, I, I guess it was nice for Parker to kind of have that connection with somebody that he knew. And, and he was a very, very nice man. And he gave us like as much time as we wanted with Adrian before we ultimately had to hand her over and and, you know, he, he so gently, like, you know, wrapped her. Um, and then Parker wanted to go out. And Parker carried her out with the mortician oh, to the car. he did. Yeah. So he was able to place her in whatever kind of setup they had, like a box or, you know, some kind of. Like bassinet something yeah, or another. Something, okay. something that, you know, held her as, as the mortician took her to the mortuary. Um, but that was devastating for me to um like have to hand her over and it was you know we saw her yeah a couple days later in the mortuary and we had time with her there before we had the graveside yeah but it's still hard it's, it's still hard handing over your baby that you know you have such little time with anyway yeah. um and I, and I think like it was terrifying to me to like have to be in a hospital <laughs> still recovering from having a baby but not having a baby there with me and so they, they, they left the room and, and I just, I was sobbing. I was a hysterical mess. And I, I remember a nurse came down and just sat with me and she put her arm around me and everyone was just so kind, sensitive and patient, and loving. And, and not everybody knew what to say or do, but just the fact that they weren't, they weren't weird about it. They weren't. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great way to put maybe it. they maybe they were uncomfortable. I don't know, but they didn't let me know that. Like, yeah, that's a great way of putting yeah. it. Because like, they just they wanted me and Parker to know that they were there for us, and that you know, I I could just I could feel like the devastation that everybody was feeling. Like, it was hard for everybody. It was 
it was a big deal for everyone. Yeah. And like, it's not like I'm, I wanted everybody to be sad. Not, not that no. at all, but just it, it was very touching to me that everybody cared. Yeah. Because it, uh, it touches them too. Like, I am sure that they don't see that all the time and it right. is probably hard to, to watch that and, and have to participate in that as well. Yeah. As a caregiver, in a sense, as a nurse, as a, as a MA, as a doctor. And I've got to think that, I mean, I, I'm not in their profession, but that's got to be one of the hardest parts oh, yeah. of their job, oh, right? Yeah. I mean. Completely. I agree. Having, and yeah, like it probably doesn't happen very often, but I feel like once is enough. Like, yeah. like once is, you know, dealing with it myself is enough just once, but, yeah. you know, having to be a doctor or a nurse and probably have to go through it several times in yeah. your career is draining. That's it's yeah. hard. Yeah. I just, I admire them for like, you know, keeping it together, being professional and still giving me the care that I needed. And right. I've heard stories of other people's hospital experiences not being as ideal. Mm -hmm. And so I feel very blessed that it wasn't the case for me, but, but very sad. That's not how it always is yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just have never seen it before and they just don't know how to deal with it. And they're, and they're weird. Like you said, yeah, <laughs> your nurses were not weird about it. And yeah. Others are. Right. Okay. So you spend the last day there and is Parker with you the entire time? He, he didn't go home or anything or check on Harrison or anything like that. I don't, in that time. not in my memory. I think he stayed with me the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Which is so nice because after a certain point I was like don't leave me you can't right you cannot go anywhere you have we're stuck to the hip I'm like exactly. we're attached to each other I'm sorry you can't <laughs> leave and um so you guys discharged the next day and um headed home how how was that did you guys immediately get Harrison back or was um, it just you guys getting home he stayed with my parents for a little bit okay um and he was kind of traded off between grandparents because at that point my in-laws had come back okay. home and so my parents and my in-laws were very understanding that you yeah. know I'm, I'm recovering from a c-section and then we're dealing you know with the emotions of losing a baby and so they were very great to, to offer to take Harrison for as much time as we needed and and he wasn't with them for yeah. for super long right but we were given a few days maybe a week where it was just the two of us. Yeah. And that was hard because part of it was like, I, I knew that I was not capable of showing up for Harrison in the way that he needed me to. And I wasn't capable of taking care of him. Um, but I also needed him. Um, and, and like, and I felt terrible that like, I'm grieving the loss of one child who's died. Um, while also it felt like I was neglecting my living child. And I knew that I couldn't, that I was not capable of of taking care of him. But that was really hard. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, my parents and my in-laws were great at taking him for us. He loved his grandparents. And, you know, like I said earlier, he didn't really know what was going on. Yeah. Like, he just thought that it was, he was having the time of his life. Yeah. Going he's, from, yep. Grandma to grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, yeah, we were by ourselves for a little but you know, leaving the hospital without a baby was hard. I think that they wheeled me down in a wheelchair. Like, I think, I don't know if they do that for vaginal births. I don't know. But, like, I was wheeled down in a wheelchair after I had Harrison mm -hmm. all three times. But, like, you know, you come down in the wheelchair and you kind of have people at the front desk. It's almost like they're ready to say, like, congratulations. Congra yeah. yeah. And for us, there was no baby, like. Yeah. Nobody said anything, which was the way that I wanted it. I didn't want anybody saying congratulations. Right. But there was a family that was loading their car, like, right next to us, who had just been discharged, like, right before us, that did have a baby. And that was just, like, <sighs> like, lucky them. <laughs> yeah. they, they get to go home with their baby and, like, just get back in the car in silence. Just, like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, it's just been a few days and it just, like I said earlier, like our whole life has just turned around. You decided uh, that you guys wanted to have Adrian buried, it sounded like. Yes. 
what was that like planning a funeral for your baby? That is the most terrible thing I want to say. It's the oh. most terrible thing. Yeah, I I remember like sitting in the sitting at the mortuary. You know, he, we were shown the book of like uh, it was basically just different flower sprays that we could choose from and different ideas. He showed us the you know the size of coffin that she would be placed in and you know we had a little white teddy bear that we were gonna that he, that we could put in there with her and I mean I cried throughout all of that too it, like I didn't want to do it <laughs> and it didn't feel like something that you know people our age should have to know yeah <laughs> like how that process goes you know neither of us are even close to losing a parent yet like yeah. our parents still have lots of life left yeah so, you know, having to sit at a mortuary and plan a funeral was like not something that we ever thought we would have to do soon. So it just felt weird. Like, I should not be doing this. Like, I, I still feel like a kid. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't, I, I know nothing when it comes to planning a funeral. Or I had no idea how much it costed. I had no idea how much caskets costed or burial plots. And yeah. so quickly, like we learned all of that, like the process of buying a burial plot. And then, you know, Parker and I ended up just buying our plots at the same time yeah. as Adrian's because we wanted to be close to her. And it's like, what other 28 year old has their <laughs> burial plot bought? Isn't it crazy? Yeah. It's so nuts. And just, you're like, this is surreal. Where am I? Like, right. It's crazy. Just so many ex experiences that you don't think. Yeah. You'd have to deal with until so much later. So it, it was hard, but we we just planned a very simple graveside. Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, just family and close friends show up, and I said something. I and I like didn't know if I was going to be able to or not, but I like I shared a few words, and we had um, the the bishop of our church ward. Mm -hmm. So he came and he said some things and or my mom gave a prayer and we just, we, we cried yeah. with our family and our Good. friends and it was really special to have those people there with me and that, the, the morning of the graveside was the same day that I had to run into the dermatologist and I remember <sighs> like a couple days before, like I originally called my OBGYN's yeah. office telling them I've got this rash I assume it's from the stuff they put on me yeah and they said okay we'll contact this dermatologist I contact the dermatologist and the only day that they can get me in is the day of the graveside and so they were wanting to schedule me at a later time in the day and so I'm like sobbing to this poor secretary like I can't come in later in the day because my daughter's funeral is that is that afternoon, oh. like, is there any way you can get me in in the morning before, like, I need to get this done before her funeral and I can't wait because I had already gone several days with right. this just horrible, horrible rash. And so that was uh, having to, like, explain to every yes. person, like, my daughter just died. <laughs> and they're like. And to have, yeah, this, yeah, like that, that exact face, like, just shocked. Yes. I don't know what to do. So all these weird little details like you know i said earlier like with the laundry like yeah you know i had to do laundry while dealing with the loss of my baby and i have to make a dermatologist appointment mm -hmm. and go on the same day as my daughter's graveside and it just feels like those two things just how are they existing in the same yeah moment almost yeah yeah doesn't feel real yeah it's so crazy ah oh, i'm sorry that <laughs> That happened on the state. Oh, oh, yeah. No. Yeah. But you guys had a nice graveside. But we we stayed for a little bit. We you know chatted with friends and family. But then ultimately, Parker and I wanted to stay um, after everybody had left. And so we were able to be there as they, like, they you buried. know, put the casket in oh. and then, you know, filled it. And, you know, it's it's a small casket. It's yeah. a small hole in the ground. It so we were so able little. to stay for the whole thing. And, uh -huh. you know, it was really important to Parker that, you know, we kind of put like the first handfuls of dirt into her plot. And so we did that, you know, and 
you know, her cute little, uh, maybe that sounds morbid, cute little casket. It's a small <laughs> casket. Maybe that's not the right word. It is but so tight. They're so a, small. Yeah, it's and... a tiny little casket with, you know, we, we placed some flowers on top of it, just lowered in, and then we, we dropped the first two handfuls of dirt and then the, uh, what are they called? The Just grave, the gra- the cemetery help. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, workers. Same, the yeah. cemetery workers. There were two men that were like the the burliest, like gruffest, like most rough and tough looking uh-huh. guys that you've ever seen, and they were so so sweet and so sensitive and just like so respectful. And they let Parker and I just sit there and watch as they did that. And then I I think. Parker kind of helped place like the sod back on top. Oh, really? Because again, it's so small that like yeah, it's, it it's wasn't a like, dirt patch. Like they could just kind of like flip the yeah grass back on top of it, and just I just these little details like the cemetery workers being so sweet and kind, just spoke measures. It it, it meant so much to us. Um, we were met with so much kindness and respectfulness and and sensitivity by. By so many different people, we, we just we felt a lot of love. Yeah, there was evidence of it everywhere. Yeah, I think that is really cool. Rebecca, thank you so so much for telling us Adrian's story. Of course, and I am so glad to to know a little bit more about her life and that she was here and that she's a really important part of your lives as well. So thank you again. Yes, thank you so much for having me.